Hey Frontline, this is Val. Um, I'd like to spend some time today talking about the origin of HIV. Uh, this tends to be a controversial subject, um, and so I think it's important for us to address it. Uh, and the sort of bottom line that I want you to take away, I guess, is two. One is that there's a lot still to be learned, um, and we none of us can say that we know the whole story. Two is that it doesn't change the fact that HIV is here today. Um, so whatever um, actually happened in quotation marks with um, regards to the origin of HIV, um, that shouldn't deter us from fighting it today um, and doing what needs to be done to stop it right now, um, rather than spending time in the woulda shouldas of the cat of the past. So okay. 28 official a years of AIDS and counting. Um, what we have here is a picture of the MMWR from June 1981. Uh, and this was the first appearance um, of what would later be called HIV or AIDS um, in a medical journal. And it identified a mystery. Um, five young, quote, active homosexual men had a very rare pneumonia. And this sparked questions um, in their medical providers' minds, um, and then those medical providers, uh, there were two of them, got together and wrote up a piece on um, this mystery. And so that sparked the sort of question of what was going on in these people's bodies. Um, we didn't know at that point to call it AIDS or HIV. Um, uh, all that we knew was that there was something going on. Uh, so what was going on, we now know, was HIV infection. Um, and we have here a picture of uh, HIV right next to a picture of SIV, or simian immunodeficiency virus. And you can see they're clearly closely related. Um, in 1999, the a frozen, frozen tissue sample of chimpanzees in West Central Africa shows an SIV almost identical to HIV. Um, and from 1976, we actually have HIV in the tissue sample of a Norwegian sailor. From 1969, we have HIV in a tissue sample of a St. Louis teenager. From 1959, we have HIV in a plasma sample from a man who lived in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, and the best guess that geneticists can make of when SIV branched off to become HIV was in the 1930s. And they do this by looking at um, how much HIV, how much the, the HIV genome changes over the course of one generation to the next, and then they calculate how many generations that would have taken. Um, and so the best guess is that in the 1930s, SIV got a foothold, or by the 1930s, SIV got a foothold to become HIV. Um, so this, the fact that it um, was found in chimpanzees has led a lot of people to say some really messed up stuff about who had to fuck a monkey, you know? Um, and I want to spend some time on this concept. Zoonosis um, is what we call it when a disease crosses from one animal to another, and specifically when a disease crosses from a non-human animal to a human animal. Um, it's more common than people think. Bird flu, anthrax, rabies, ringworms, toxoplasmosis, there are many more. Um, it is not about... It, these, all of these diseases are not necessarily spread in the same way that humans spread HIV to one another. Um, so nobody had to fuck a monkey. Um, and when we're looking at the history of HIV, um, so history, this is what happened. It's usually told by people who weren't there. Um, so um, actually what they're saying is a hypothesis of this is what might have happened. Um, and when we seek the proof the, or the evidence, that turns hypothesis into facts of history. And proof is physical. Proof is not just Stephen Colbert's truthiness that it seems right. It's proof is something that has evidence to it. So here are the four sort of top hypotheses on SIV becoming HIV. Conspiracy theory, oral polio vaccine, 
cut hunter theory and colonialism and technological changes. So we're going to spend a couple minutes on each of these. Conspiracy theory, everybody's favorite. Um, the hypothesis here is that um, HIV was created by the government to kill people it doesn't want to let live and the government is withholding a cure. And the proof? Well, there isn't any. Um, and that's kind of the hallmark of a conspiracy theory. Um, if there were proof one way or the other, then beliefs might change. But because there is no proof, um, beliefs don't have to change. Um, and they stay beliefs. So we do know, based on the geneticist's best guess, that this would have had to happen by the 30s, and DNA wasn't even discovered until 1944. Uh, so. Next up, oral polio vaccine. The hypothesis here is that HIV was in the kidney tissue of chimpanzees that, we, that was used to generate oral polio vaccine in West Africa in the 50s. Um, and the chimpanzee kidney tissue was definitely used to generate oral polio vaccine in the West Africa in the 50s. But we have a lack of physical evidence that that kidney tissue contained HIV. In fact, there are frozen samples of the vaccine kept at Wistar Institute in West Philadelphia, holla, um, and there was no HIV or SIV in those tissue samples. It also doesn't fit with the timeline that we're working with. Um, the It's too late, basically. Um, the shift from SIV to HIV happened in the 30s. This happened. The oral polio vaccine happened in the 50s. It was also never peer-reviewed when it came out. Uh, it was published in Rolling Stone magazine. And while I might trust what they say about movie or movies or music, um, I'm not going to go there for my science. So uh, third th theory um, is the cut hunter theory. Um, and so this hypothesis is that SIV passed to humans basically through blood-to-blood -blood contact, open wounds while hunting and skinning, or through eating infected chimpanzees. And so proof, well, there's high plausibility. There's lots of potential incidents. Um, but what doesn't make sense is that it doesn't match the timeline. Humans have been hunting and eating these particular chimpanzees for thousands of years. So why didn't it happen earlier? Um, you know, why aren't there historic records of what we would now recognize as HIV? Um, which leads us into the fourth hypothesis that I want to talk about, which is colonialism and technology. Um, so this hypothesis sort of expands on the cut hunter theory. Um, and the hypothesis is that the practices of colonialism from the 1890s to today basically degraded the health of people subjected to it and that technological changes that came with it had unforeseen impacts in health. So we know that there were forced labor camps and colonialism um, and that these things that folks who were in these forced labor camps had a lot of ill effects in their life and changes in their lives um, including medical work that they didn't consent to. Um, New technology, what we're really talking about here is plastic disposable syringes. These are um, cheap enough that you can get a lot of them, but not so cheap that you reuse them in the same way that you do today. So they weren't disposed of and they couldn't be sterilized with boiling water. They had to be, they were reused. Um, so the proof, um, there were many thousands of possible exposures and we know, for instance, that 89,000 workers in the, what's now the Democratic Republic of the Congo, 89,000 workers were preemptively treated for sleeping sickness using six syringes in 1916. So if one of these 89,000 people had experienced the cut hunter um, thing, if they had been exposed to SIV, then their um, the SIV that was in their blood then had the chance to see a lot of other CD4 cells um, and really gain a foothold um, in humans. Um, so there's a difference between creation and complicity. You know, the U.S. government has never addressed HIV with the urgency required. Um, and it's always been content to let people die, right? That's not the same thing as having the foresight and technology to create a killer virus back in the 30s, but it has made the epidemic worse. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, so whatever your beliefs about the origin of HIV, we can't deny this fact. 
it's here now and it can change it was never inevitable it never had to be this way and there are things that can change there are things that we can change so it doesn't get worse I'm gonna leave it there I'll see you in the forums